Hello friends, welcome back to this part of the video. As you saw earlier in my previous videos, my Angular material has been set up, fire builds, rules are identified, all my setup or configuration parts are done. So in this part, what we are going to do, we are going to start working on our pages. So let's start with the first pages. Uh, but before we do that, let me start serving this app. So let's head out to our repository, mobile picture GPS attendance app. And uh, this time, let me open a command prompt window. So let's head to WP mobile. And here at this time, I can do an ng search so that we start rolling out this, um, this working on this project. This will start serving the project at localhost 90. Uh, 4200. Now, first thing we are going to work on our footer.component.html because this is the easiest, and as you can see, there's no changes required to the footer.component.ts. Let's head out to our footer.component.html. As you can see, there's the vanilla code. Next thing I want to do, I want to just like you know put some um, uh, styling into this one. Uh, just going to call, call it class here, and again, you know, this is the class I'm going to include that in my styles.css. Next thing is, um, oops. I'm going to include a copyright statement. So as you will see, this copyright statement will appear at the bottom of my application window. Next thing is I'm going to include a you know link to my Twitter, and I can also include some copyright info, you know some website information. Um, that's pretty much it. I think that's all is needed into the footer.component.html. Let me save this. Okay. Now we are going to work on our header component. So um, as you can see, my header is supposed to look like this. It should have a button on the left hand side, an icon, and this text, this is the page title. So suppose if I'm some other page like attendance page, this title is gonna change. And on the right hand side, I want to show an email icon and a setting icons. So if the user click on this icon, it should take him to the login or logout or settings page. So let's work on the header part. So this, I'm going to make a separate, you know, as you can see, there's a separate component, header component, and I'm going to put everything on the header component there. So let's how to header.component.ts, okay? Now here, uh, first thing is I'm going to include the input. I'm going to import the input from the Angular core. Uh, and the reason I want to import, because these two things, like you know, the page title and this image, I want to dynamically display based on the um, based on the page type. So for example, I'm in the attendance page. So see, this uh, well, by default is taking by the login page. So see the icon changes and the page title changes. So let me create those two, two uh, input variables here. So I'm going to say input image URL. And this input, this image is going to, this is actually an icon, mat icon here. So uh, my header component is going to take this value as an input. Second input I want to uh, create here is a page title, okay? Next thing is I want to create a couple of variables, which is going to, because you know, once you click on that email, once you send that email, I want that a message to appear which says, okay, email sent equals to false or true. Couple of other things, selected value and form showing. Once I code the HTML side, you will understand why I'm doing like this, but I just want to make sure to import these things here. Let me make my screen a little bit bigger here. Okay, now next thing is, um, I'm going to include HTTP client because you know once I send out this email, so I will need the HTTP um, or HTTP module from the Angular common. So I'm going to include the private HTTP variable to my constructor, and then I'm going to call a method say on submit. What this on submit is going to do? The click uh, the moment I click on this post side, that means like click on this submit button, it's going to take all this my form values, name, phone, email, message, etc., and it's going to post it to an to a web Website. So here I'm using a PHP third-party PHP um, um, module, which actually it works as a SMTP. That means it takes the value and then sends out an actual email. My uh, it depends, like you know, so wherever your email API is hosted, you may you want to send this. Uh, uh, send these forms to that PHP or whatever that SMTP um, you have, okay? So the next thing is, I think that's pretty much it on this uh, header component dot TypeScript file. Uh, let's go work on our header dot component dot HTML file. First thing, as you can see, I need to have a toolbar. So I'm going to create a toolbar. Now inside the toolbar, I want to create this icon here. So I'm going to create a mini fab icon. And in case if you're wondering where I'm getting this from, so let's go to material.angular.io. So here, you know, uh, depending on the components, you know, you want to include. So for example, in this case, you want to have something like a toolbar or say button. So here you can see a lot of like different type of buttons. So, you know, you can have any of the fab icons or anything, whatever you want to include. Okay. Next thing is, 
Okay, so I'm going to include the mat icon for that mat uh, for the button. So this is going to be my, my mat icon. Next thing is I'm going to include a root menu here in case again if you're wondering where this is coming it from. So go to the menu item and as you can see if I uh, go to the menu here and I'm going to borrow this implementation from the Angular website. So if you click on this menu it's good, it, it, it nicely drops out a, a, a navigation for your menu. So that's what I'm doing here. So basically once you click on this menu item it's going to trigger that root menu and it's going to display the root menu. And this root menu I'm just going to include um, like router links to three different pages home, fingerprint, and account circle, okay? Next thing is what I want to do here is include uh, the dynamically image URL. So what this image URL is, is this nice looking icon. So based on the page you are, so for example, you are on the attendance page or login page is going to change that icon depending on which page you are. So same thing with this, about us and these icons are going to change. So again, this is coming from image URL, which are, uh, which are marked as an input. So these are, uh, whenever this header component is initialized, the, it will expect two different values, image URL and page title, okay? Next thing is let me include a page title. And then I am also including an example a spacer. What this does, like, you know, it pushes up, it creates a blank space between the icon. So in case if you're wondering where this, how these two icons are pushed to the extreme right-hand side, that's what the CSS class is doing, okay? Let me show you this. See that, like, you know, how this is pushed to the extreme right and extreme left, okay? Perfect. Now, next thing I want to do here, I want to include an email icon. So this is my email icon here, uh, like this. Now, uh, again, uh, what this email is going to do, like, you know, if you click on this icon, is going to drop, is going to display the form and hide the form. So that's what it's doing. Form showing is not a question. It's going to toggle that form here, okay? Look at this. Okay. Next thing is, okay, um, I'm going to create the last icon here, account circle, okay? And now let's try to include that form. So as you can see in my form, I want to include four different fields. First, include a title, then include four different fields, name, phone, email, message, and, and post. So let's just start including the form. So it's going to be a very simple form. Next thing is inside that form, I'm going to display the form when the form is not already submitted. So once the form is submitted, what do you want to do? The, the, you want to hide this form and display a, a message which says, okay, your form is already submitted. For example, that's what it's going to do. Once this form is submitted to your uh, API, all you need to do is email send a question true. So that's is going to hide that form. Okay. Now, now let's include a, the real form. So first field is, as you can see, is a name field. And uh, there are a couple of validation, minimum length and maximum length. So it's a good idea to include a couple of like, you know, validations here. So for example, if name is required, if name is touched, you know, you want to display, okay, minimum three characters are required, five. So uh, let me show you the behavior. Suppose the user enters only one form and as you can see, minimum three characters are required. So that's what it's going to do. Next thing is, I'm going to include the phone. Um, phone field and similar to the name, I'm going to include a validation for the phone, which is going to look like this. Um, next thing is I'm going to include an email field, which is very similar. What it's going to do is going to include that email validations here. Next thing is I want to include a comment area and comment area, as you can see, is a text area. So I'm going to include a text area here. Uh, and then, you know, one thing very nice looking feature is suppose you want to dynamically display how many characters you have already um, already input. So for example, say test. So as you can see, four characters are already consumed. So it will show four out of 200. So basically the way you can do it, you can just say message dot value and then you calculate the length dynamically and it's going to show you that how many characters are already consumed. Last thing is I'm going to include a validation for the message and then let's include a submit form button. So what is going to do is when the click on the user click on the submit button, which is called a post here. So click on the submit button is going to submit that form. It's going to take all the values and, you know, so call this function on submit and it's going to further is going to call your HTTP API, your SMTP API. In my case, I have hosted it at the PHP file and then is going to uh, reset that form and next thing is going to do is going to hide this entire form and show that another message here. Let me create that message. So ng template show email. So message is saying email sent. Yes. And then you include another close button, which is again is going to reset that form and hide that um, uh, hide this entire form here, okay? Otherwise, you know, user will click on, keep on clicking on your submit button over and over again. So it's always a good idea once the message is sent, you want to display a message saying, you know what, your message is already sent, you are done here. So that's pretty much it on the header component side.